Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? Um, welcome to Square Pimp Brigade. On this episode, we have my boy Michael Michael Somerville. We talk about he's got a baby on the way. We talk about um what the conversations you need to have before the baby comes, conversations you need to have after the baby comes, and we talk about um just being honest and being upfront about what your needs are in order to make the make the marriage and the relationship uh continue on in the beautiful way that it, it, it was created yeah. in the first place and we also get into a little bit of how to avoid having a sexless marriage you know that's a big tip that you talk about in the show but we also uh do uh, a bonus show after this uh we're going to be doing some listener mail we do the bonus show over at patreon patreon.com slash manschool 202 that's where the bonus show is at and we do uh advice listener mail bonus content the whole thing and you support us it helps keep the show going so please Check it out if you, you can to help us out. It'd, it'd be nice. And plus, uh, both of us do consultations. For Dante's consultations, go to DanteNero.com. Uh, if you want to consult with me, you can find me via email, uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com for any type of dating, sex, relationship, or just life advice. Uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? Square Pimper Gay was popping. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution's being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, this is uh this is gonna be a good one, man, because this is a special show. Now you know I've said that a hundred times before, but this time I mean it. <laughs> mm. Nice. Um, we got a good guest on here. It's a good dude I've been friends with for a long time. I don't hang out with him uh, clearly as much. You know what? First of all, let me talk to my real friend, not oh, this clown that we have as a guest. <laughs> Give it up for my boy Harry. Harry, what's going on? How you How you feeling, baby? You ready to rock? Life and roll? is good, man. Life is good. I'm 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 out there trying to make moves and trying to live life and be the best me. So I'm doing. I'm every day. I I'm halfway there. You know, every single I'm, day. I'm liking your little fucking shitty mustache. I like yeah, your shitty. Yeah, it is a shitty mustache. <laughs> I'm liking your shitty mustache. I don't know. But other than that, you know me. I'm always supportive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're real. <laughs> you really know how to keep a guy's spirits up about even the little things in life. <laughs> uh, let's, let me introduce my guest. Yes, let's and, do that. Uh, I mean, I didn't mean to call him a clown, but it was like a comedic kind of mm. thing. Um, this dude, I really, really, I, I want you to know, Mike, act like I'm not talking about like you're actually here, like you're not listening. What? Mike is a really, really good dude. Very, very funny dude. Um, I've known him in comedy. I don't know, easily maybe 18, 20 years, something like that. Been around that long. Right? How long you been doing it, Mike? I'm supposed to pretend that you're not talking. Oh, right, right, right. right. No, my <laughs> good. I like how you pay attention. Give it up for my boy Mike Somerville, y'all. Give it up. Yeah. <laughs> Probably 20 <laughs> years. 20. I mean, we've known each other for a long time in this thing, right? Such a good dude and a funny dude, man. Uh, it's good to see you. I was happy to hear you were coming on the show, man. Um, Thank you for really? having me. I was thrilled you wanted me. Not not a lot of people want me as a guest. So, <laughs> really, that's weird. They don't know no better. Fuck them. And here's what's funny. I love the background because if I take my virtual background off, right? If I if I take the, let me see where if I get my virtual background. Uh, looks like we're in the same house, right? <laughs> yeah, you're on. in the next room. I'm a, I'm a, I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Was I supposed to do a fancy background? You don't nah, have to. No, nah, you don't have to. We, what I, room I, are you in? Out of I'm curiosity, in the bedroom. Oh, nice. You know what? No, Mike. I, you know why I did the virtual background? Because it's just it's uh, Harry hates it. Oh, but, I can't stand it. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but I don't pay him no mind. No, no, um, it's <laughs> because number one, it, it advertises. Hurts. It, hurts my there's soul. some advertisement you know what i'm saying my instagram is up there my concert and yeah. so i mean i i can uh which is weird because now harry is actually doing uh relationship consulting too so that's we'll right see how long before he puts it up in the fucking corner you piece of i'll shit. find you know what <laughs> it, let me tell you something if i do put it up there it's not gonna look like uh it's a <laughs> manhattan cable access show i'm just gonna say oh, it right now man. i'm just gonna say right now i'm disappointed my i'll tell you why he has a studio 
he has a studio and he hates using the studio. Now he does. Now he, the excuse is he's renovating. So now he doesn't. But boy, Dante creams his jeans to put on a virtual background. He's like a little kid. For, I don't get it. He loves it. He has always loved the virtual background, even when he has a full studio there. And it would drive me nuts. Now, let, he has well, let me let me say this, too. Uh-huh. Uh, Harry's known me 21 years. About and that, yeah. there's nothing else that Harry could say I cream my jeans for. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> nothing else. Because I get <laughs> pussy. No, I mean, <laughs> that's the only thing he could ever say I cream my jeans for. I don't. It's a virtual background. Uh, so. Yeah, I think it looks great. I hate to. I mean. I have no, to you can, no, you don't have to hate it. You can say it with pride. Let him know what the fuck time it is. That's mm. what you do. Listen, anyone listening to this, go to the YouTube page and watch the YouTube link. And let me know what you think of the background. As half of Dante's head disappears a little bit. Well, maybe little, you should help me set it up so it's better. Yours well, is better. Yours looks like you got a studio. It does. I put some time into it. Uh, here, you want to see what it looks like? There's a green screen. You have one of these. You bought it before Yeah, but me. I tried to do it. It did the same fucking thing. When did you try to do All right, we don't have to get into this now. When All right, well, whatever. You, wanna, you, want not... you want my help? Call me up. Call me up and I'll help. All right. Yeah. All we'll right. Do it. Anyway, it's still the now best damn pot. It's still the best relationship the podcast best damn out podcast there. Podcast in the game, Mike. Back Mike, you back. married? I'm married, and I have a baby coming in six weeks. Congratulations, yeah. bro. Thank you very much. That's yes. awesome. I can't the wait first to one see for your you, baby because right? I feel like you have a baby face too. Your baby's <laughs> gonna look just like you <laughs> right now, <laughs> and he's not gonna have a shitty mustache like Harry. Oh, How Jesus. <laughs> You better hope not. It might. You know how these babies sometimes they come out extra hairy. You ever see one of those babies that come out with that full head of hair? Yo, I like seen a John baby Travolta with like Saturday Night Fever. I seen a baby with black Bogoyevich hair, like <laughs> crazy Bogoyevich. Oh, I love it. Where it looks like it's a wig, like somebody put yeah, a baby like wig he was on wearing it. a yeah, wig, yeah. but it was like thick and black and rich and shit so anyway right, right when they're born they come out like that i've it's seen rare, a baby, but it happened, well, i mean yeah. right Ooh. after that i think it was you know who i think it was harry i think it was fucking tom cruise's baby don't tom cruise have a baby i think so yeah his see. baby had fucking crazy thing. scientology hair or some xenon <laughs> some xenon hair or whatever the fuck was going on with him how you been bro it's good to see you man it's great to see you, man. This is, you know, I'm in a weird place because because getting married and having a kid, like I'm going through a lot of like your life, your career, how much you gave up to do comedy in New York. And so you getting to see you is like fits right in with like, oh, my God, like I, I, I miss like the people I started with and the, you know, I'm just, I, I think I'm appreciating more like what we've done for the last 20 years, you know, a little you know, nostalgic. Like, yeah, little right. And and you're still having the baby. You still got the I mean, there's a lot of guys that sacrifice for this game and then they have nothing to show for it. You know, well, that's, and I think I feel like, like not that I'm quitting, but I feel like my Shout priorities out to are DM Sweetler. What? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But I feel like my priorities are shifted. Also, you're like, oh, wow. You know, yeah. All of a sudden you got like a kid to worry about and stuff. So like I'm, I'm having these strange dreams about like the business leaving me, which has been really weird. Uh, right. And not that that's happening, but it's just like I feel anyway. My point is, it's nice to see people that I, I've known for so long. Yeah. Well, you know, what I so you there's a few people like that I would put in the category that I know you that I genuinely like you've always was a kind kind of smiley dude, <laughs> just a guy that I and the guy that you wanted to run into. Do, do, do you Thank understand you. what I mean? Thank like, you. You like, ah, oh, man, it's Mike. And then you like, hey, blah, 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 blah. You know, uh -huh. and you just feel Same like. Same with you, though. Same with you. I appreciate that. A lot of people would disagree with that. They don't, they don't really call me. <laughs> It's a, it, it, dude. it depends who you ask, but it's usually somebody who did some shit that deserves. Shout out to Will <laughs> Sylvan. In the oh, house. Jesus. Just want to. <laughs> no, despite the rough exterior, is like yeah, Dante was always so sweet. Yeah, it's a, Mike was always a guy. I was like, ah man, I want that guy to, you know, I, like when you know how when other people get shit and you be like, I hope they die. Yeah, I never yeah. felt mm. that way mm. about whenever I saw you. On you know TV, how that's was, you know how that's your natural reaction anytime yeah, somebody I that guy dies. I was never when I saw anytime Mike on TV. A, I would be like, ah oh, man, good for Mike. 
Good for Mike. <laughs> I appreciate that. When you Dante want me to die. <laughs> yeah, when Dante sees you in commercials, his instinct isn't automatically, man, I oh motherfucker. I hope he dies during the I hope Super that Bowl. guy gets monkey pox in the ass. <laughs> I hope he gets monkey ass monkey pox. <laughs> That's well, that, and that's a real compliment coming from a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to die. <laughs> I don't want him to die. That's it. Um, so, Mike, did you uh, was were kids always the plan for you and your lady? You know, uh, no. Well, so in my life, I mean, yeah, like I always thought I was going to work really hard as a comedian, have a level of success. You know, like uh, maybe not like Seinfeld, but that kind of thing. Like I got something, I made my money, and now I can look to like get married and settle down. That was kind of my since I was. You know, so you 22. wanted to get a nice little twenty-three year old, leave it in, and then- squirt it off, shoot up the club. <laughs> she's way smoking hot, and she's with you with all your millions. And uh... I didn't word it that way, but um... <laughs> <laughs> but he's not saying no. <laughs> But yeah, and then obviously I never got to sitcom or the talk show or the anything that made me pop. But that got to a point in life where I'm like, yeah, I mean, do you want to just be, you know, alone forever? So I yeah. started, you know, taking it more seriously. But no, to answer your question, we met uh, 2018, liked each other a lot. The marriage thing seemed logical, but I was more on board with the kids than she was or having a kid. She was really? she's got a good career, like likes New York City, likes her money, likes her lifestyle. And what uh, she do for a living? She was she's an accountant. She works for uh, Price Waterhouse, so she got the consistent income. And, oh, nice. you know, yeah, yeah like Mike, the- way to Pri- set up the game. Way to- Price- <laughs> that's some good stuff, Mike, because Price Waterhouse, that's one of those commercials that comes on during football. And I just like, all right, I got to go pee because this is not <laughs> this is clearly I am yeah. not their audience at all. No, yeah. health insurance, all that check. check, yeah, check wow. so good job, Mike. Off. Way to set up the game. Way Thank to stack you. the deck, baby. Not <laughs> only that, because she's an accountant, so she can push out some puppies and just do the fucking <laughs> spreadsheets right from home. <laughs> now, like, the whole game has changed. She don't even have to fucking... I mean, sh- sure, you're going to have to spend a little money on an extra laptop or two when the baby spits up on the, on the laptop. <laughs> But other than that, you, she could do it right from home. And this is the great thing. It, nobody talks about the good part of COVID. You know what I mean? This mm. is what COVID, COVID set this up so that you could work from home. She yeah. Does she work from home now or no? She, uh, part of the time, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's this This gave us a perspective on work and, and achieving things differently than we would have. We would have never even thought. And it's beneficial for the for the, the employer because now they don't have to have the real don't have to pay for the real estate. Yeah. You yeah, know, 100%. I mean, you got to hold people accountable and whatever, and you don't have to deal with the bitch eating your fucking lunch. You don't have to <laughs> eat your lunch out of the fridge. Mm. But mm. for the most part, you can, you there's almost everything that you can do at home. And yeah. even, I mean, even now, like we used to love to have dudes in the, in the park, in the, in the studio. And, and, and Harry still likes, you know, uh, Harry is still likes, people in the studio yeah. i think it makes for a better show now logistically i hate doing it in the studio but, but the quality would, let of the me show, ask you this how yeah and this and this is something i've never asked you sure now that sure. we are been doing it on remote for so long i don't feel like this much different from the, it the vibe is definitely better like you, you're you've adjusted to it and you're great at it for sure i still like the level of people in the studio and how it looks and stuff but uh i mean we, we're making it work I also mean, we do great stuff harry usually it. makes our guests suck his dick that's true the show. Too. yeah <laughs> and <laughs> that part also. that's why i requested remote yeah <laughs> i remember you saying can we go to the studio i remember you saying that. <laughs> that's what i meant by hard out at 5 15 yeah <laughs> so it, it's a, it's like i really feel like harry and i it was awkward for us to do at it first remote. yeah I think and now I don't and... feel it. I, I, I'm quite sure if we had somebody in the studio, it would feel a little bit better. A little but bit not, better, but yeah, not but to the not way by it much was. anymore. Do you no. know what I mean? Yeah. We just fixed what? that background, and then I'll feel perfect about <laughs> it. We're gonna talk about this tonight, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> It's not like you got to groom your mustache. How it's- dare you? You know, <laughs> so what? So I saw a couple episodes of Better Call Saul and I'm trying to look like Lalo Salamaca. It's not <laughs> a big deal. If I had known, I would have grown something for I this. Nah, You're the nah. only one without facial hair. But I'll, don't worry, Dante. I'll get advice from Harry at gmail.com in my background so that we match. <laughs> if, for anyone who wants to do consultations. 
I'm proud of him because he's doing. Yeah, he's doing. Con- I'm actually proud of him because he's doing consultation. So, like my my side hustle has been mm. my guy. Like, so I was. I'm so good at telling people what to do. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, well, it's also because I was a hoe. I was a really huge hoe. You got a lot of life lessons to share. Yeah, yeah man. Mo- I, per- from I, perspectives that most people don't have. I. You know what? I talked about this on. I did. I tell you, Harry. I talked about this on stage. Um, I was talking about body count. Yeah, uh, I think I saw Friday. You asked somebody what their body count was. Yeah, but I talked about mine. Okay. Right? Mike, what's your body count? I, you know, I don't know. And when I got married, I was trying to like, you know, figure it out. Like you were trying like, to up it <laughs> <laughs> right before that wedding. I was like, yeah. no, but I, I don't actually know. I mean, it's not triple digits or anything. What's the but est- I'm guessing what's yours the is. Estimate? What would the estimate be? I was, man, I mean, I, I, I estimated one a year for 20, 30. 40. Yeah, I mean, probably 40. But Mike said, you know, I never thought about one a year for 40 years, 40. You, there's not a lot of math in that. Right? There's, there's not a well, lot of I was, math. I was trying to, I, I don't know, maybe 40. Was you a hookup guy too? Like No, you, no relationship like, guy, 100%. Just, bang. Oh, yeah. So those no. are long. Those are, So those are long 40s. Well, like, that's those the, are, the, yeah. I yeah. too was a relationship guy, but just multiple ones yeah. at once. <laughs> a lot of overlapping. I'd be you know, on a of... date with a girl and I'm like, I remember I dated this girl for like 12 years and I dated this other girl for 17 and I dated and she's like, how old are you? 90? You're 92? <laughs> so, um, Harry, what's your body count? Jeez. Uh, at this point, I would say it's like gotta be in 75, something like that. No, I've made up, yeah, I've made up for lost time. Now, again, I also as am a return customer. So a lot of those were repeat. repeat. Any, any since the mustache? Um, <laughs> you know, nope. No, no. I still mm. with the one lady and she likes it. She likes a free mustache. My lady. Ride. <laughs> My lady loves a free mustache ride. Yo, that must. <laughs> I mean. Uh, me and Harry, I used to do this character that that mustache would be perfect for. I would what go, the character? Uh, how you ladies doing? A lovely <laughs> night. <laughs> He's laughing. At me. Said, how you ladies doing? It's a lovely night tonight. Um, which one of you bitches is giving up some pussy? <laughs> <laughs> you just do you that. Dress, you ladies, it's such a nice night out tonight. You ladies dress so nice and beautiful. Who's giving up some pussy? <laughs> It was always a nice compliment up front. Oh, my goodness, ladies, you look so lovely tonight. <laughs> I mean, those dresses do compliment all of your eyes. Let me ask you this. <laughs> Which one of y'all is giving up? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I was talking about my, my fucking... Uh, the body count. My body count. So I used to talk about it all the time on the show. So I, I guys who have... So I used to keep a book, right? I mean, I know... We all know guys that kept a book, right, Mike? You know, sure. right? Like a Bible, sure. right? <laughs> <laughs> actually, oh yeah, that I is used a to book. write it in the corner of my Bible. I would just <laughs> use the yeah. actually, I would just desecrate a Bible with my fucking body count, which is awesome. Um, but um, so you my a Catholic upbringing, right? Yeah, I grew up. Oh, I was altar boy. Yeah, uh, that's what Catholic I thought. Elementary school, Catholic high school. Well, I went to Brooklyn Tech. Are you a New York guy? Where are you from originally? From Jersey, no. Jersey. I so I I um I went to Brooklyn Tech, uh, which was like a uh like I don't even remember. I don't know if you would even know that. What part of Jersey? Out just north central, out just past Newark Airport <laughs> suburb. Right, so you, I mean, you probably wouldn't know this, but so there was like Stuyvesant Bronx School of Science yeah, and Brooklyn my dad Tech was Stuyvesant, yep. and and the Bro- Brooklyn Tech. Those were the high tech yep. schools. So I was pretty sharp, and I got into Brooklyn. Te- I actually got into Bronx Science and Stuyvesant, but I didn't want to travel, so I went to Brooklyn Tech. <laughs> nice and uh, had to wade through all those Asian kids. You on, got kids. you. <laughs> You got in there th- with a breakdancing scholarship, didn't you, Dante? Absolutely. Well, what happened was my <laughs> elementary school, um, it was a uh, Coolio, and uh, <laughs> and they were like, "Well, you guys you had to save and- save the rec center." They were like, "You go ahead and run like you always have. You 
if you just stand up for yourself and you could be somebody. You know, and then the you know the white lady came in the ghetto and then she told me I could be something. I, and I started doing homework and then I I made I made something of myself. But um, I got was stabbed. that your first body count? Right uh, well, there. damn it, I should have nailed that bitch. <laughs> um, but I I um I got stabbed in the uh in the bathroom of Brooklyn Tech because because some of the vocational schools would sneak into Brooklyn Tech where the smart kids were and they would rob you know rob people in the bathroom. Oh my! And this guy tried to take my watch and I was like, Pfft. it was it, it was a fucking top of the line Timex. I don't know if you know those. <laughs> <laughs> those, Harry doesn't know nothing about that. Top of the line. I remember, <laughs> vaguely remember Timex, but it ain't yeah. worth dying over. And it's, I was like, it's Fuck no Casio. I was if it was a Casio, I would have <laughs> murdered that guy <laughs> with the calculator on it. That's was, right. <laughs> yeah. So I um I said nah, and the dude tried to stab me in the face. And I put my hand up and he went through my arm and I got Jesus. stabbed. Woo. And my um my so my dad went to uh, uh world he was in world war Two, and he went to normandy and he had this huge nazi dagger probably about this long right and uh he oh, took it off a, a, a nazi in the soldier war, yeah. and he had it in his house in the house and so i put it in my jan sport um and i was walk- looking for these motherfuckers and my pops found the knife, it was so long, it was sticking out the top of the jam spot, which is fucking insane. And he found what him, he was like, you you know, this is at the time when we used to beat our kids, the good old days. So he asked me, what was I doing with the knife? And I said, well, somebody stabbed me and I was going to I was going to give him the business back. Mm-hmm. And they transferred me out and put me in uh, Bishop Lachlan. I went to school with Mark, Mark, um, Theobald. Uh, Mark Jackson. Oh, Mark Jackson. What are you oh, saying? Mark ah! Theobald? No, Mark. <laughs> Mark Theobald did not play basketball. Oh, um, I, don't know. I didn't know it was basketball. <laughs> the only thing Mark Theobald ever did was he was in a, a brush your teeth contest with his big ass white Jesus. teeth. So- <laughs> you guys got to look up Mark Theobald to know. <laughs> so, um, and then I went, I went, that's how I went up. But I started out in, in Catholic elementary school and then. But um, what was I talking about? Oh, the body count. So I said, keep a body count. And at, but you know, I mean, I was a male stripper for right. 10 years and then I was a pimp for six years, give or say, give or take a few months. And uh, so my environment, like, I understand I'm not the best looking dude in the world, but my environment allowed access. So my my body count at 32 years old is when this is when I stopped counting, right? But right. I was like, this is ridiculous, right? Uh was 3263 was my 3, body count. 3263. Oh, that's a that's a lot of pages in a book. Yeah. <laughs> at 30 at 32 years old. That's oh. when I stopped counting. That's not where the numbers stop. No, right after that, I was celibate until now, until, <laughs> and then, yes. uh, and then I stopped counting. Um, so having that amount I mean, of mathematically, like, that's like two hundred a year. Yeah, it's about that. I mean, from, from the time you're sixteen to the time you're thirty-two, that's like two hundred a year. It, it probably was two more than two hundred a year because, like, the ten years that I was stripping. <laughs> yeah. That'll like add to the body night. count. And also, right. yeah, all, at, at a time, too, also. Yeah, I mean, with doubles counts. and triples and, you know, uh, you can stack man. them up. There you Stacks go. up. The old, Check out. The old, there's an asterisk because of the threesome. So really, it's not. <laughs> 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 you know, it's funny. It's like when I started, I had some influence on Harry. Yeah. Harry, like, at your best, we talked about this. Harry, how, what was your um, the most in rotation at one time? At one time, all right. So I had eight at one time. Now I count anything long. Anybody who was in my life in that moment that it could go down at any moment, eight. So some people were out of state. There was one or two. There was one international. Because what happens is when you say eight, they go eight. How is that possible? You're banging eight at a time. I go well. One's in Vegas. When, 
Like that does that's not eight. And I'm like, how many are you fucking right now? <laughs> oh, none. All right, then shut the fuck up. Don't yeah, worry. You want you want to you want to put an asterisk eight. on my eight when you're yeah. fucking five you local, know. three abroad, whatever. Eight. Whatever, bro. Whatever. <laughs> they still call in. me. I'm picking up. I'm picking up girls from the airport. It, you know, it's going down. It's work. It's eight. Eight at one time. Eight at one time. Within uh, yeah, eight consistently was the most. Well, I love that you have conversations about it, Harry. Like you're like you're not, you're like seriously <laughs> challenging. Other people are challenging your number. This is part of your day. Occasionally, huh? there's always uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a, a dude. Mike, I'll you name know, it. I love hating P- ass, hating PJ ass Landers. <laughs> I love PJ, but the hating ass PJ Landers. One oh, time, that's what he says. Yeah, it was him. I, I didn't know, know, I know it was him. It. it was him. He's like, that's that doesn't count or whatever. And then another friend who did it goes, that doesn't count. PJ doesn't like, hey. count dudes either. So <laughs> oh, let's Jesus. not. Well, I do like the thinking though, like it's someone who is. I've done it with, and it could happen again. So that's no like meaning. Dante's, like... Dante's number could be thirty two hundred, like li- live ones right now that could come back at any time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know. <laughs> But if I'm if I'm still if I'm here, were, the you, thing. You, were you tapping my phone this weekend, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I we get ready for this, <laughs> if we've hooked up, right, we've hooked up already and I'm still we're still chatting. We're still texting. We're still sexting and we're planning to do it again. I count that as being count. in count. the roster. That's yeah. She's on the she's on the team. So if we're yeah. arranging flights and I'm clearing a schedule and making sure that there's no overlap because Dante loves overlap. <laughs> I don't like overlap so much. <laughs> Or at least in the moment, you know, because well, I mean, I like your, I like on the day, you mean, I, you don't like, I, mean, the overlap I don't like seeing two in one day. Harry. I don't like, I like seeing overlap. two in one day. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I can't. I can't be doing morning stuff, running around like Ray Liotta and Goodfellas. <laughs> you, got, you got a hotel room with three different rooms. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want to do an episode of Three's Company where I'm just sneaking from one place to the other. I like to make sure, hey, if you come in for a week. And Mr. Furley comes yeah. in and calls you queer. <laughs> <laughs> you're committed. I love how you're committed when you're with one love the woman you're with. I love but it. it's but uh it's exhausting. It was exhausting. It, and now it's down to one because I didn't replace. I, as they disip, as they all kind of, you know, went on with their own things, which happens, you know, they live because I'm not committing to them. It happens. It, it happens. I just didn't replace them. And then COVID also ruined my retirement. So they all move to- on. I was COVID was supposed to I was supposed to really kind of my girl I'm with now. I realize how much I, I love her. And uh, I was like, all right, we're going to be what together you said yesterday. How, I'm dare, no. how dare you? <laughs> all I, thought, I heard is COVID ruined my retirement. The girl yeah. I love now, I really love. <laughs> no, no, I love her. Right. We had decided like but she was in Los Angeles. She was away. And so it, we had had a conversation what we wanted to do. And I, you know, I said I was going to be with her. And so she goes, I understand because she knew what the deal was. I was honest with everybody that I was with, you know, all the girls I was with, like I'm seeing other people. They're not it's not exclusive. She goes, you know, she was and I said, listen, I'm going to be with you. And she goes, I understand that you're with other people. Do what you have to do. And then when I'm when I'm there, it'll be a different story. We'll figure it out from there. You so, get that all the time, right, Mike? Mike you, she goes, I know. I know you're with other people. Just do what you have to do because. <laughs> That's my it's that's my marriage yeah. right there. I yeah. know I I know you're a comedian who talks about commitment. So yeah, go have your fun. Now, yeah. I, I, my girl says if you do anything, I'll kill you. Mm. <laughs> so similar. Similar. Yeah. It's almost the same thing. That's almost the same thing. <laughs> you know, I, you know what I think is funny though. Um let's see how should I put this? Uh I'm I'm still learning. I'm still learning as much as I do know about women. I'm I'm still learning things myself. And one of the things that I feel like I, I'm just uh, like, this is still, this is marriage advice, Mike. Um, How should I put this? Uh, this, the ink is still wet on this one, All you right. know? Um, and so anyway, I had a kid, I had a kid uh, two years ago. Uh, and then my wife kind of snatched him and took him back to England. Oh, right. wow. she's, she's from England. So he's in there. I'm going to see him uh, this week, actually. Next week. I'm going oh, to awesome. I'm going to England to see him, right? And, as this uh, air, as this airs, you'll have you'll already be in England. Yeah, I'll probably be yeah. there. Um kicking and, over uh, uh, teacups and stuff and 
Yes, he's eating crumpets and playing soccer. We got to change <laughs> all of that bullshit, right? <laughs> Get him a real football, right? You gotta, uh, you gotta go over there and make him drive. You know, you gotta make him drive the little Tonka truck, the electric oh, I truck on the wrong him, side. You know, I got, you know what yeah. I got him for his birthday, right? Yeah, I know you got him like a Bentley, like a baby Bentley, or no? A I bought a Jeep. I bought a, a two seater because he got this little chocolate. This is him, Mike. Oh my goodness! Oh, he's adorable. Congratulations. Thank you. Looks like his dad a lot. He, he is precious. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. What's his name? Or Dante, of course. I, you oh, know, God, I'm not I'm naming Ralph. him after somebody else. What if I named him Ralph? And I'd be like, my wife would be like, let's Ralph name him Nero. Ralph. And I'd be like, well, who the fuck is Ralph? That's what I want to know. <laughs> who the fuck is Ralph? He's not paying for this kid. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, so beautiful. what's this advice you have for Mike? Here's the advice. You have to be, well, it's kind of late now because you're already married. But here's what I would mm. say. My one of my buddies called me up and he was on the phone and he was like, oh, man, I just got engaged. And I was like, oh, good. I want to give you some advice. He goes, wait a minute. The phone's on speaker. She's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly he knows me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't you know, I also don't mince words because I don't. First of all, I don't give a fuck about his bitch. I care about him. Right. right. And so. One of the things that I've learned um, is that you have you cannot make any assumptions. You cannot make any assumptions about anything. Things that seem very obvious, you got to not you got to not assume that that is the case. Right. Right. So I've been married twice. I married her because she she was trying to stay in the country and I needed to marry her to stay in the country. And I was like, this is my son. Where else am I going to go? Um, apparently I didn't have any say so in that. And okay, this I mean, so you deal with things as they come, right? Yeah. Um uh, but what had happened was midway through the sex stopped. Ah. Right? Sex stopped, and I said, Hey, you know, well, this is when the baby was first born, and I was like, All right, I you know, I know you just had the baby, and then da, da, da. I mean, you know, but it's been a couple, you know, babies like one, and I'm like, well, you know, I, a guy can't get a blowy. What's up? Step up. <laughs> and uh, she was like, well, I don't like doing that. And I'm not really good at it. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't know what the fuck. I mean, you know, because she she met me through the podcast. Like she was a fan of my podcast in England. And she was telling her boyfriend at the time, you really need to listen to this podcast. Oh, wow. Right. And then she didn't. So anyway, she, she came. um she actually hit Harry up first. She was like, I'm a really great fan of the thing. And I was like, Harry, what's she look like? And he was like, let me send you a picture. And I was like, all right, let's get her on the show. And so that's yeah. how we hooked up. Let's get her in studio. <laughs> right. Um, let's see it. <clears throat> she came aha, in more ways than one. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. So, um, <laughs> so we ended up hooking up. And then she was doing that, you know, that goofy shit where you they uh, backpack across America. Yeah, yeah. So she came see me, hung out with me for like two days, and then she went to L.A. And she called me up, and she was like, oh, I miss you. I was like, all right, we'll come back. So she came back, and she ended up staying with me. What was it like six months? Had? Like th the rest of her visa, she stayed with me. Yeah, she stayed with you for a couple months, went back, and then came back again, if I remember. Right. So when she stayed a couple of months, but I had a couple of chicks on the roster, yeah, right? Correct. And I was like, listen, I got these other things lined up, and... uh let me pay let me get you a, a room so i got her a room she went stayed out and i smashed other chicks while she was in the room and then she came back afterwards right which when i think about i would tell you that harry did i that one i don't remember you don't remember yeah, but a lot a lot goes i mean you, know, you don't tell me you don't gotta tell me everything <laughs> look it's how disgusted harry is I'm disgusted <laughs> i'm like man Pretty this is the most one. romantic story I've ever heard. Yeah. It is, it is, right? <laughs> so I was like, look, I got other things lined up. You know, we didn't know what was the future or whatever. We was not, and I mean, I, I liked her, but I mean, I, you know, I'm not, one monkey don't stop the show. Come on, right? Um, yeah. And uh, she, I sent her to a hotel, got a nice hotel with a pool so she could tan and stuff, right? And I was, over, I was tanning that ass here. And then, uh, she came back afterwards and then she hung out a little while. And then I had another chick that came by, something else. I was in, and I was like, man, you gotta go. You gotta go to, 
She was like, oh, I can stay with a friend. And she had a couple of friends. And I was like, all right. So this was going on. So clearly. To the way your shenanigans, so to speak. I don't I don't <laughs> like the fact that you referred to it as shenanigans. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Irish. She's British. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Um, but I wasn't, you know, one thing I she don't was do aware of what you were doing, your lifestyle. And then she yeah. had lived. She had listened to my podcast for f- six years. Like, how could you not know? Right. So then me, you know, then all of a sudden it's like, no, I wasn't. I couldn't get a blowy, whatever. I was like, what's up? And she was like, well, I figured you would take care of that on your own. Oh, all right. This was this was after the baby, after she was pregnant, right. and she had moved back. Well, and, and I was like, you. Yeah, all right, fair you. enough. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but I don't think, Harry, you could. I don't think it was. Uh, you don't think I don't what? think she really believed that I would. I you know, my opinion is that it, whether she believes it or not, it doesn't matter. She changed the narrative to fit whatever she wanted to fit in, to be quite right, honest. But I don't think that she believed like Logically, one thing, it doesn't make sense that she doesn't believe that you could do that. You were doing that already. Yeah, that, I never even thought of that. Yeah, Thanks for you that, are, Harry. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, um, you were already doing it. So there's no way she could be like, there's no way Dante, I, I, Dante ain't going to go out and bang other chicks. <laughs> you know, but that's <laughs> he what can, he doesn't have the resources. Yeah. How is he even going to how does he even do people even do that? There's no way he can do that. I mean, she has proof that you were doing it. She's aware <laughs> That you're doing. I think it was more of a psychological issue that that, you know, what happens sometimes is when somebody is unhappy, they start to change the narrative, especially in relationships, because they're unhappy either with themselves or what have you. And we've we've talked about that at length in the past. Definitely. She just was revising the history of what was going on, because if you meant you mentioned it to her and then she yeah. gave you the green light. And then later on, what happened when it she, came, how could it you do up, this? Yeah. And I was like. How can I do this? What, you, you you told me to. What do you mean? Yeah. Right. So but if I remember, her response was also that was before the baby. But now we have a baby, which is very weird. Like she just changed the goal mark from after the fact. I'm just pointing that out because as an example to other guys that that does happen where. Yeah. Somebody they'll change the goal. Well, that was before I had the baby or that was now the baby is two. I thought it'd be different. You know, things that they don't mention to you. Yeah. But now, like, it's well, your but fault we used, for not. We being used, we've been doing this podcast nine years. And something that we used to say years ago was that women have integrity and amnesia. It's so whatever they agree to on the front end has nothing yeah. to do with what they agree to on the back yeah. end. So, yeah, you, 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 you know, oh, go, go. I figured you'd get some. Oh, mm. I, and I was like. Right. Fair enough. You I said, even did say that. no more, fam. Hold my beer. <laughs> and uh, uh, and you did that. And you certainly did that. I did that. So was, um, was that the advice for me? Yeah, no, was that the advice wasn't the advice. For my- <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I lost track. <laughs> but here's here's what I would say. Um, now, any Mike relationship- is like, I don't. All right, so I don't understand. Is my wife? <laughs> Am I the one who's having <laughs> sex, or is my wife having sex with other people? <laughs> I'm supposed to send her. We out. have a baby. Whatever lesson this is, we better pick this up fast. I have to, I, I have to learn blowies. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> <laughs> so, the fact that you, when you marry somebody, and you're in this relationship, and you're in love with each other, and you feel like there's certain things that you're not honest about, like or. If you even if you're not honest about it, you have to be things that you feel as though is uh, are understood. Right. You know what I mean? Like even if infidelity is is something that you get married and you go, you would go, oh, we're getting married. We the the how you respond to infidelity, you need to say that. Like it needs to be. Like, I, like I would say, if you fuck around with a dude, understand this is over with. Now we would think that you don't have to you're say saying that what, because you're saying there is no nothing is understood in a relationship. Nothing is, is understood. What you're so right. verbally, to the same token, what I say now is, if if I'm dealing with him, I go listen. If you understand something that sex is never not on the table. So understand that there's I I'm I'm not an unreasonable person. I mean, if you, you know, if you don't want a period, you don't want to have period sex, or if you don't want to, you don't want you don't want to take it in the butt. I get it. 
All right. Well, I'm, uh, hey, I'm flexible. I'll you know work what I mean? With you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this guy. Yeah. Come on, I'm not a savage. But what I do say, if you're messing with me, and you the sex stops or even slows down, I'm gonna holler at you. Hey, yo, yo, I love it. You know. Hey. But I'm also gonna make it clear that if it stops, I will be fucking somebody else. Right, right. Married, not married, whatever. Understand something that sex is a part of this relationship. Will but that's be a part. Your, that's your thing that it needs to be understood, Dante. Right. For you, because right. for Mike, I'm like, I don't know how this helps Mike because I don't know if that's what that was. It's Mike's perspective, but there is something Mike probably wants to blowy for the rest of his life. He's marrying sure this woman, does, yeah, to raise I, this kid. I put that in my vows. Yeah, did you put it's very that? specific? <laughs> And he made him read it twice. Go, he said, "Go back, go back again." <laughs> and just, and her mom and don't testified. mumble this stuff. Yeah, her mom <laughs> said, "You tell him, Mike." <laughs> There's a notary there and everything. Yeah, it's it's legal. <laughs> so I, I mean, I think what happens is guys will say the assumption is when we're married, we're gonna have sex, we're gonna we're right. together. Da, 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 da. No, 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 no. The, the the parameters of it changes, and if it's not said, then you're now you're in a sexless marriage. Right. And not only do I say I'm not going to continue to be in in a sexless marriage, but I go look. If you're not fucking me, somebody's going to fuck me. Right. Right. So I'm not a per. I'm not saying I'm going to jump out the window. She was like, "Oh, can you wake me up in in like an hour?" Right. And I go, "I'm out of here." Not wake me up. <laughs> But but I you're think not you're not you going in there. My ankle sprain. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> she's I like, think I got stuck by a bee. A, yeah, flip she's over. Like I just had a root canal. I'm like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Take some Advil and sh and open your mouth. No, 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 no. So, I was gonna say shut your mouth, but that didn't work. No, 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 no. Um. So what I'm saying is you you have to say the things you have to say. The things that are important to you, and I think what happens a lot of times with men, all jokes aside, we get into marriages and we guys get married and they get into and 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 more of, more often than not, marriages end up being sexless right. because you know it becomes a chore for her and this that and the other. But you know what else is a chore? A chore a chore is listening to your horse shit every time you fucking <laughs> goofy. <laughs> You have to say something at the office or something. That's a chore for me. I mean, relationships is give and take. You have to, you know, you're supposed to be taking care of each other. Right. And I yeah. think sexually, I mean, I'm joking. I'm going to serious sit up a little bit. But sex is just as important. If you're dating somebody and you're or you're married to somebody and you're raising a child together. One of the things that keeps the relationship going, and, and it, it, it's also the way men express their intimacy, feel the connection with somebody and, and, and whatnot. And other, other than that, it just becomes like, can you imagine if, um, you know, if you got guys that are in these sexless marriages and their chick and then, you know, maybe the chick is a, she's a cunt and she's nagging her. But she was still sucking his dick. He'd be like, eh, I mean, how bad could it be? You know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't matter if he's getting nothing out of it but regular sex. Because, I mean, guys are okay with putting up with sexless marriages, getting nothing out of it, being abused, not being, you know, not not being appreciated and everything else. And they still stay in relationships. So could you imagine if you just had a guy who had all of those things wrong with the marriage, but he was still getting fucked? He'd be fine. They'd be all right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Be, a guy would like uh, you agree, Harry? Oh, I do agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, if, if, if it, it's a, what matters, if, if it, it's what matters to the individual. Like, but I'm if, saying yeah. when it comes to men, sex, yeah. we're wired in yeah. that way. That's that important. Sex matters. It's massively important, like for dudes, because if it, it's also, you know what, for me, I find that. Uh, in relationships, I don't need as much as I always think, but just the idea when it's not there, it bothers you. That I can't have it. That I it's, can't have it. I always it. say I don't yeah. mind not, not fucking. Yeah. I mind can't fucking. We're not, un like, again, it's not being unreasonable. Like, listen, I know we're on your, we're supposed to go see your mom, but I haven't been fucked. So let's, we're canceling that and we're fucking right now in the car. You know, it's not that. It's just if, if it's there, if you have, if it feels healthy and it feels organic, that's fine. It's when, 
it stops and you know it stopped because somebody is either not into you or or you're getting it from somebody else. It has to be one of the two. If you're not or into me, or you or you're not attracted to me or you're just not you you can you have a lot of women who are asexual those things that yeah. that they feel are those things that turned them on and made them little hot little minks maybe you're not doing anymore that's true too yeah you have to look at yourself are you still dating your wife but they still expect they still expect the fidelity right yeah yeah they don't I'm not fucking you but I don't expect you I don't expect you to to violate the vows of our marriage when the vows of your marriage is part of that is the, the sex in it. And I think that has to be I, I, what I've learned from this situation, situation that I'm, I'm, I'm always kind of, um, I'm so my fucking allergies. I can't look like a cokehead the way I keep scratching my nose, <laughs> but my fucking allergies killing me. But, um, I think it has to be said you like so often men are uncomfortable about, Having saying, that conversation, being honest yeah. about that. And now, I mean, like second date, I'm like, yo, I know we haven't fucked yet, but when we do understand that it don't stop and the minute it stops, understand somebody else is getting the business. So and I don't so, mean it in a good way. Do you say that when you pick them up or is that between courses like on the hey, day? My do you bring that up? Hey, my name's Dante. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, what's your last name again? That's not important. We need to cover this first. <laughs> and then the waiter's just standing there awkwardly. So, I mean, do you want the dessert menu or should I? <laughs> and the waiter goes, he's right, you know, right? right. But I, I, I think you have to say it. You have it. it it's because women have integrity amnesia. They it, the assumptive, whatever you think is assumptive is not assumptive. Unless, of course, it is you keeping up your end of the bargain yeah, and that's the other thing as a guy you got to remember are you keeping up your end because for her especially when you have kids sometimes they get lost in the focus on the kid and it becomes a transition of of the focus is on the kid which it should be it's a child you know but are you doing everything to keep her excited about life the way you were when you were dating because i know i have fallen into those habits where i get too comfortable myself because i i like i love being in love you know, and I I yeah. I enjoy the goofy shit. I enjoy the just the cuddling. But are you doing that stuff that the fun stuff you did when you were dating? Are you sexting the way you used to? Are you sending dirty texts? Like, are you maintaining your end of what you were when you met her as well? And if that's you know, so that you know that that's covered. And if it and if that doesn't work, then she's not interested. But make sure you're keeping up your end of the bargain as a yeah, man. Yeah, but here's my thing. Even when here and then, I, and I would even I don't disagree with that, yeah. Harry. But my pushback is, I'm not in no relationship with you if you're not fucking me. Oh no, now, doubt. that should no doubt. be something you you would think. Oh, that I mean, isn't that the? I mean, that's what. It, nope, it's not. The understanding is. If you're in any relationship, and this is male, female, and otherwise, if things start to slide back, and if you allow them to slide back, then that's what the parameters of the relationship is. And sex is not a given. It's not. It's not. It's not just something that you can infer. That is something that is the case. And what I've learned most recently, and I'm 55, right? Um. For me, it's literally a situation where I w I open my mouth and I as soon as it's like it's a situation. I mean, I don't even have, we don't even have to be having sex to do it. Like it could, you know, with there's a romantic connection. I go, well, let me let me explain something to you about you, me. A relationship there has to be a intimate and sexual part of the relationship. I don't need like we we're comics. We. We have some of the greatest and the most creative friends in the world. I'm not trying to be your friend. You ain't that interesting. You don't tell funny stories like my boys. If you don't bust balls like we do. So as much as you think you're a, this woman who's so sophisticated, my friends are better than you. What makes <laughs> what what covers the the the, the what covers the uh, the spread is the the fact that we fuck. That's what that's why when you give me a hack joke, I'll chuckle at it simply because we're fucking and I don't need you to understand how funny you're not, you know, but 
all jokes aside, I think you have to say that, you know, it has to be verbalized to be clear. And it's just, it's kind of messed up because you're already on that path. But, um, the, and how, how, how pregnant is she? She's doing five weeks. Wow. Yeah. Now, if this is a little personal, but I'll you can answer it. Or not are y'all knocking it down while she's pregnant? Yeah, that's been an interesting thing. I would say uh, it has slowed considerably. It's, but uh, are you still? I I, uh, I get the old job done. I would say. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, there, there's been shenanigans. It should it, slow, say. Mike. It should slow. It shouldn't it be should at the same slow, pace. Mike. I mean, yeah. It shouldn't be at don't, the same. Don't pace. be a fucking animal, Mike. What well, the it fuck slowed is down really? for me. I hope it slowed down for her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, I'm gonna tell you something that was weird is I was uh I was weirded out by it like by the pregnancy, pregnancy stuff. pregnant or yeah, Mike, if... Mike having a baby what do you mean <laughs> yeah well both both by me having sex <laughs> yeah. I was weirded out about it but I was weirded out having sex with my wife while she was pregnant it definitely kind of weirded me out you know mm. I don't know what it was it just I just kind of felt weird about it um was it hurting the baby because i know some guys are worried about actually like you know getting on top and just my son did smack my dick while he was like get out of here (laughs) it was like a tom and jerry cartoon where you stuck it your dick in and you pull it out there was a mouse trap at at the end (laughs) he he hit it he hit it with a mallet (laughs) where he got a mallet i don't know but whatever uh, but I mean that it, I was I was definitely weirded out because I would have been fine without having sex during the pregnancy because mm. I was a little weirded out. But afterwards, it was like I was like, all right, so let's pick up the pace, sweetie. Come on, oh, we're never going to win this game if we don't <laughs> if we don't play defense. We got to play defense. Mike, so, how do you um, feel? How do how you feel going in five weeks away? Like, how do you feel about it right now? What's your thought process? As this is going on, like, what are the concerns? Like, how do you, how do you feel about the the baby yeah, having the baby? Yeah, have, being sex, a father. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? just I being mean, a father. Honestly, I'm sorry. Right yeah. now, honestly, it's 100 percent just health. You know, like baby gonna be okay. She can be okay. That's all yeah, like, yeah. I'm really been thinking yeah. about right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's. Did all you do I've the gender got. reveal party? Thing? No, no, we didn't do that. We we it's a girl. We found out what it nice. is, but we didn't have like a thing. They sent like an email that had a little button you press and it just a bunch of pink balloons come out. And that was it. Oh, no, nice. just, yeah, health, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing or thinking about. But uh, is that is that a good thing to think about? At this? Point? I mean, I, I was very I was I was very much concerned about the health of the baby. But um, in in retrospect, right, there's a lot of conversations that I wish I had after especially because of the fact this is your first child and yeah. this is her first child and so I, I i think the emotional dynamic of everything is it's so kind of overwhelming because it's now that you have you have this little person that relies on you for everything i mean the way you know the way that we you know as we perceive ourselves as men and providers like if you if your wife is not okay and you're your daughter's not okay. Like, what kind of man are you? Do you know what I mean? Right, we, right. we we have that in our head. Our our manhood is definitely attached to our ability to provide. I mean, whether right. we whether she thinks that or not, I mean, because I mean she's a CPA, but I mean it's still right. there's still that thing about where, you know, it's, it's as much as people talk about the idea of gender being fluid and all of that, yeah, a woman still wants to know that she can trust and count on her dude. That is the whole nature of the, 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 you know, the union in the first place. And, and I think, um, and so the, you know, and I'm talking about the sex part of it, but what I'm saying is you as a man, I mean, first of all, Mike's a great, you know, just so the audience, Mike's a great dude, great kind of generous and kind dude. So Uh, like he would do that anyway. But what I'm saying is, the importance of still maintaining a sexual element in the relationship when you're distracted by so many other things is we get so comfortable with a, about the child and then we don't do anything to cultivate the relationship and the relationship 
the bond of the relationship, the 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 emotional, the intimacy, and the physical, the sex as well, is the thing that creates a it creates a bond and a strong basis from which you can it it, it fuels the the car, it puts the gas in the car that gets you to be able to do and make the sacrifices and all the things that you need to do as a dad and her as a mom. And and I think when we I think when we remove that as if it's not important, um, I think it really makes a difference, you know, that you're not, you know, that you're not taking time out to be together because it's still your relationship with her is, is a, is a relationship, your relationship with your daughter is another and hers with you and your relationship as a family as well. But you, people neglect it. Because I think it becomes so overwhelming. Like in the beginning, the f- thing I was worried about was I was constantly worried about whether or not he was breathing, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like just, I used to take a mirror and stick it on his nose. Just to, <laughs> like I was really freaked out if he was quiet, if he didn't move. I was, you know, I, yeah. So, I mean, we really, you know, this becomes an important thing. But the important thing about it is that you cultivate the relationship that where the union of the child came from in the first place. Right. right. Um, my, my son was a fucking wild dude. Right. So even when he was like just crawling around and stuff and climbing and stuff, he couldn't walk it, climb up on the couch. He climbed on the back of the couch and then he fell. His arm went into between the cushions and he broke his arm. Right. Oh. Hairline fracture, but it was, you know, he didn't even cry. He just kind of, I could see him kind of hanging it. Like it was like it hurt. And then, uh, I like, we took him to the hospital. They did a x-ray and I found out that he had a hairline fracture in the, in the, in the, um, I guess the ulna, which would be the, the lower part of the arm. And she really treated me like trash. Like I was like, I was the most horrible Oh, wow. person in the world because I broke his arm and I and she was like well you didn't even apologize and I was like first of all what I, this is my son too yeah. like why am I apologizing to you about my I mean as if I'm I'm okay with his arm you know what I'm saying the insanity because I think her maternal instincts which was all Oh, like I was a horrible, I don't think she spoke to me for like two weeks and oh, wow. just it was weird. And then she dropped him. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. She dropped him. And it was like, and I was like, look, and she, and she was crying. I'm a horrible mother. I'm like, like, listen, this is what happens when you have, they have bump. This is what happens. Yeah. Um, What I should have said was like, now, bitch, you see. But, I, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't get to do that. You know, Unfortunately, do you don't that. get to do that. That's the <laughs> shitty part. Not only that, but she was so personally abusive about her own shit that it was like she didn't even she she was beating herself up so much because he she dropped him. Right. That it was like I didn't even have a chance to go. See, I tell you so. You, you, <laughs> you unaggressive, fucking uncareful bitch. I think I was just so busy. Look, it's fine. He's fine. It's okay. Right. He's looking at him running around. He's laughing. But it but I didn't get that same response. And the thing is, I didn't even do anything. I just couldn't get to him quick enough when he fell. You know what I mean? <laughs> is she still a fan of the podcast? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't really it would be I, really weird if she was. If yeah, she is, she should go to the Patreon. I mean, she should support she should be a Patreon. <laughs> she should support the Patreon and you know help us with the I mean, bonus I'm a, coverage. I'm a great guy, Mike. I support they were in England. I'd give her him and everything and possibly and I would do anything for them regardless because of it. But uh, I'm also learned that one of the things that I'm saying is because we get into this situation where we want the marriage to stay together, not being honest, I guess is what I'm saying. And not yeah. speaking up because we wanna you know, we, we want it to be OK, but having these conversations are really important. And I think I think if I had had these conversations before, things would have been different. Yeah. You know, no, I, I think, makes the, sense. you know, 
Well, it makes sense to just want to have a relationship with the person that you first had a relationship with. You know, it's not just the baby takes over everything. Yeah, you know, that's it, yeah. It's my my grandparents were good at that. They were always you know made it a, a priority to be like we're married to each other. Right. We like kids are great, but also you. Yeah. And I always admired that about them. Yeah. yeah you gotta yeah. you gotta date your wife. Yeah. But your yeah. wife's gotta date you too. Right. right. You know exactly. what I mean? It, it's just not on you. And I think, you know. Some and, and I advise everybody like to have these comments, have these conversations because once you're caught up and you have that, I mean, it's it's literally a situation where you're not going to be thinking about anything else, right? But this kid, right? It's just, especially you're a good dude. I mean, if you're a piece of shit like Harry, you'd be like, eh, hey, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what now? Wait a minute, what now? You know, you grow a mustache for one week. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I think it is the mustache. You just look like you don't have no evil. empathy. <laughs> you look like the evil Harry, like you know, in the, you know, in the backdrop. It's the yeah. backdrop. You know, when you know when you know when you go to the to the other, you go to the the other the bizarro, dimension. Bizarro, bizarro Harry. Yeah, look with like the bizarro evil, Harry. Like the evil Harry. So, you know. <laughs> I just think Dante has a fun backdrop and Harry's looks so serious and it just yeah it, it's painting all all the moods. I think that's what it is. It was Mike. You got to run, right? You got to be out of here. Yeah, yeah. Bro, corporate in a couple minutes. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. I'd love to have you back again, man. I really this would. Was so much fun, man. This I, is the longest we've gotten to hang in how many years? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> let's do. It. Where are you playing a lot now? Where are you playing? I've been uh, bouncing around Broadway, the cellar, uh, uh, Gotham once in a while. So, yeah, bouncing around. I'm going to take a little time once the baby, you know, so I won't be out in the clubs for a little bit. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll i be back this fall. Okay. All right, yeah. brother. I wish you all the luck in the world, man. You're such a good dude, man. Uh, Thank you. And likewise, congratulations to you. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah we'll Trying not, to figure we'll, it out. You know how it is. It's all we Anything do. you want to plug? No, man, I'm having a baby. Uh, so I would say just, just listen to my stuff. You know, I got albums, the best of Michael Somerville on Apple Music and Spotify. Go go listen. Don't even listen. Just follow it so I get credit for it. No, you don't okay. have to listen to it. Michael's a funny <laughs> dude. His stand-up is definitely worth checking out for yeah, sure. Funny, Very funny, funny guy. Uh, thank you, guys. Mike, I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Harry, talk to me real quick. Uh, well, I'm doing relationship consultations, uh, so hit me up uh, via email at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com, and uh, we can set something up, and I can help you uh, with your relationship, life, anything. Okay. Uh, me. I'm having fun doing it. I love doing it. I'm so glad Have you done any talk. yet, yes. Harry? Yeah. You got and a paid I'm... one yet? Yeah. 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 And uh, and how uh, many and, have you done so far? Uh, so far I've done uh, because we just started as of this. I've done two so far, so it's been nice. it's been pretty sweet, man. And it's uh, it's nice even just getting to chat with the listeners too as well. That yeah. part is fun, but just helping people is really nice. So if you need help, don't be afraid to reach out. Yeah. Um. You know you you know I always do the consultations. I've been doing it for a while, and everything else. Google me, bitch. You know how to get me. <laughs> I'm out, yo. Uh, Gybb, get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. Um, we out, man. Keep listening. Don't forget the Patreon. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on uh, Dante is the Dante Nero. Follow the uh, yeah. We're the, gonna do bonus YouTube content page. on the Patreon right now. We're gonna probably do some listener mail. Uh, yeah. So join us over there. Patreon.com/slash Manschool202.